Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to our worship service here at Grace United Methodist Church. And we are so grateful and uh, joyful to see all of you today in this cold uh, Sunday morning. And, and yet we are grateful that we could be here and we could feel the warmth of the Spirit Amen. among us. And of course, we are so grateful to have Pastor Simon that is Simon, Simon, <laughs> for, uh, to, who is joining us as our uh, guest as preacher this morning. And we also want to acknowledge uh, his wife, Bev. Bev, thank you for being here, Bev, as, as well. So thank you so much. Now it's time uh, for our announcement. Uh, today is our third uh, Sunday of, of Advent. And we are grateful that, that the Ariola and the uh, Manong Erning and Manang Carol uh, are here as well, families, to uh, light our Advent candle today. And uh, I think another announcement is that we will be having our Simbang Gabi beginning Wednesday, I believe, which is the 22nd uh, at 7 o'clock, I think. So please uh, mark your calendar and your time, and uh, I think we will be receiving uh, uh, information on, uh, on our Simba Gabi, uh, the Zoom link and all that. So uh, <clears throat> we are grateful for that opportunity of worshiping together as we uh, continue to uh, celebrate Advent uh, towards Christmas season. Do we have any announcements, greetings? No more? The on Thursday, on Thursday afternoon, okay. Our mission group will be putting uh, sandwiches, bags again on Thursday afternoon. In, uh, in morning, I should say, in the, in the morning in support of our Sa uh, San Francisco night ministry, which is uh, a very... Uh, uh, wonderful, just a wonderful ministry uh, in our city, San Francisco community. So those who have time to, uh, to come and join the, the group, please, uh, you're certainly welcome. Any other announcements before we start? All right, no more. Well, let us now come to the Lord uh, as we worship Him in spirit and in truth. And may we feel the presence of the Spirit as we worship Him, as we worship God today. We will start with the uh, singing of the Christmas carols lead by, the, uh, by our uh, praise team.
want to celebrate something, or when we just feel lost and alone and uncertain about life. The universe and everything, we need a blessing. We don't always think of it that way or word it like that. We say we need advice or support or companions or someone to come alongside, beside and lift us up again so we can see more than the tops of our shoes we seek a blessing. For many of us, we go home, we ask mom, we talk to dad, or brothers and sisters, close friends, those we grew up with, those who know us best, we want them alongside. We want to be in their presence. Somehow we know that being there, being home, will make all things better. Maybe it won't be fixed or solved or wished away, but at least we won't be alone. We seek a blessing. Mary is with an incomprehensible burden and gift. Run to the cousin's Elizabeth house, looking for someone who knew a little of what she was going through, looking for a place to hide until the reality of her condition could become something real. And she received a blessing. The prophet of Micah spoke of a blessing coming to an unexpected place and an amusing town, yet by God's grace would become the means through which God would bless the whole world. Bethlehem, the little town of blessing, we seek a blessing. We, we light, light this candle, candle, the candle, candle of, of hope, of, of peace, of joy, and of, and of today. today. Love, Love as a sign of the we know blessing, and we know, know waiting for blessing to be felt and, and lived. Live. We, we light these candles as a sign that we still seek a blessing. blessing. It's time to go home. Let us stand if we are able. Jesus conquered 
God of expectation, fill us with hope this day. Birth in us an expectation of goodness and grace. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that we may perceive your presence in the world and jump for joy at the blessings and hope all around us. In your holy name we pray, amen. Welcome again to our worship service here at Grace and those on the Zoom. We welcome you as well. We see you now. Uh, there you are. Thank you for joining us this morning. And thank you, Praise Team, for singing for us. We didn't have the, <laughs> uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the words for the song, so thank you for singing uh, uh, praises uh, for us this morning. It's time to share our, uh, our blessings and gratitude that we have received this past week. Anyone who would like to share how blessed they have been? It's in us 89th birthday. Narinig niyo po yan. Eighty-nine. Happy birthday, po Ina. Thank you. And of course, last Sunday was Manong Earnings' birthday. <laughs> I would like to thank my family uh, that gave me this birthday. Oh wow! Oh, special. Great. Thank you, po. What a blessing to have you both here today, as we acknowledge how God has blessed you. Uh, on your birthday. So any other celebrations? Those in the Zoom? I don't have a celebration, Pastor, but I have a praise I think, report. Uh, Lil, you are muted. 
Um, I'm talking. You could unmute yourself. I'm not muted. Oh, we cannot still hear you. You can't hear me? Okay. Something is wrong. Maybe you're... Well, anyway, I just have a praise report. I don't know if you can hear me. Now we can hear you. Okay. So I just want to share, um, last Friday, the youth and young people, young adults, came together and put the hygiene kits together. So I want to share a couple of photos that were sent to me by Kimberly. And I oh, think, great. Um, yeah. Hold on. Please do. Oh, you guys wow. see that? Yeah. Yes. So there were, I don't know how many of them, but uh, Jerrica, the two Kim markers, Shane, um, Catherine, Gordon, and um, did I miss anyone, Kimberly? Carla and and Tito Rod. Okay, I didn't see Carla in the photo. So that's one picture. So thank you so much, youth and young adults. Yeah, and this is what they um, they made. Wow. I think they put together 192 kits. Wow. Thank, so you, thank so you for yeah. Thank you for all those who contributed towards this project. Really appreciate it. Wow. When are you going to distribute them? Uh, Kim. I see. Wow. Well, thank you all for uh, for your hard work, for your generosity of uh, of your resources and your time your presence to put this project together. Thank you again, youth and young adults and those who have donated to this project. Thank you so much. God is good. And all the time, yes. Well, why don't we pause for moments of uh, prayer of, pr uh, of praise. Let Pastor, us pray. Pastor? Yes. I have, I'm right behind you. Yes. So I have one more thing I wanted to share. Uh, he, he reminded me that uh, this next week, it will be our 10th anniversary of having picking him up from Russia. And he wanted everyone to know that. Wow. <laughs> and how, my big baby. <laughs> Thank you blessing. so much. That is so special. Oh. Thank you for reminding mom yes. that this uh, coming week is your 10th anniversary of, of them picking you up in Russia. The day after we were Christmas. On the plane Christmas Eve and in Christmas day. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. I forgot his name again. Oh, Alex. 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 Thank you so much. Great. Shall we clap our hands in that celebration? <laughs> okay, let's pause for moments of prayer. Oh, holy God, we are so grateful for all of these blessings that you have given us and continue to give us. We certainly celebrate the birthday of Put Manong Earning and Ina, thank you for the new life that you have given them, that as they face this new year of their lives, we trust and we are confident that you will continue to journey with them and continue to bless them and abundantly and, and grant them your blessings of joy and peace and especially good health and good life oh god and so we commit uh, manong earning and ina to you now and and as we celebrate the birthdays we celebrate the birthdays of those who are not here with us today those who we we cannot name but you know them oh god be with them too thank you too for this um wonderful time that we are reminded of the, the, the time when Alec was, um, uh, was, was uh, picked up, was joined by his parents in Russia. And now we see how you continue to bless him with blessings of good health, good life, and blessings of wisdom and faith. And we celebrate uh, with him and, and his parents as they continue to entrust him to you, knowing that you will be with him 
in the years ahead in his life. And so we are grateful for this. We are also grateful for the youth and young adults for putting together the health kits that, uh, that they did uh, last Friday. We pray that you continue to challenge us to be generous in our time, in our resources, as we continue to be your blessings to those in our community. So we offer all this uh, thanksgiving, prayers of thanksgiving to you, Lord, as we say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Any other uh, blessings, requests, concerns that you would like to? Uh, prayer yeah, requests. Yeah. Yes. And should I go first? Yes. Okay, prayer request from uh, Pastor Alex. His cousin, Eliseo and Imelda de Guzman, who are in Manila, they're suffering from COVID. So Pastor is asking for prayer for recovery and healing. Yeah, I did get the name. Eliseo and Imelda de Guzman. Eliseo and Imelda de Guzman. And then also prayer requests for my uh, co-worker, Yelena. She lost her father yesterday. All right. Any, Ina, do you want to say something? See Ina po. Salamat po ako sa Diyos sapagkat sinapit ko ang araw na ito na ako ay malakas at alam ko na ang Diyos ang patuloy na nagbibigay sa atin ng buhay at kalakasan. At, at, at ako'y bang puso nagpapasalamat sapagkat sinapit ko ang edad na ito. At, eh. Kaya po, ako, sabi nga, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all those things shall be added unto you. Hanapin mo muna ang kanyang kaharian at kanyang kalwalhatian at lahat ng bagay ay ipagkakaloob sa iyo. Yun po ang aking experience sa aking buhay, sa aking pamilya, na ang kayamanan po na kaloob ng Diyos sa amin ay kayamanan hindi nauubos. Ito po matagal sa inyo na sa walo ko pong anak, Lahat po sila ay inadama ko sa kanila na ang mahalagang kayamanan ay eh yung hindi nawaubos, hindi nawawala. Kahit nawala na kayo, hanggang ngayon po naalala ko ang aking ina na siyang nagbigay sa amin ng ganitong pananampalataya. Aloob ng Diyos sa amin na kami ay eh kahit na layo-layo ay naroon kami at nagkakasama-sama sa pamamagitan po ng mga prayer at mga pagtawag sa, sa telephone. Kaya ako po yung napakapalad ko po, makabing dalawang mag-asawa, nagkaroon kami ng walong anak na patuloy din, pinagpapatuloy din ang ipinamak amin ng aming mga magulang. Salamat po sa ating iglesia, sa mga pastor, na patuloy din naglilingkod para sa Diyos. Salamat. Salamat po, Ina, sa inyong testimony sa oras na ito. Salamat po. God is good. All right. So let's, uh, any other prayer concerns? We, yes, Ate. Yes, we should also remember Lydia, who has been coming here before, but now she cannot come because But Ati Lydia, that is a testimony that we're thinking of you. Yeah, so we're so glad. I thank you, Manang Carol, for remembering uh, Manang Ati Lydia. And thank, <laughs> and thank God she is here. Yeah, so thank you so much. Any other concerns? Let's continue. Yeah. Continue to pray for our brothers and sisters in the Philippines in Visayas Island. They are flooded, and I think 112 people are dead already. So also in Kentucky regarding the tornado. Thank you for reminding us those uh, 
those needs, uh, Manang Yunis. Indeed, let's continue to pray for those who are affected by the tornadoes and the typhoon in the Philippines. We may not know them, but God knows them. And again, may we be challenged by uh, sharing our resources to these people. Uh, the United Methodist Committee on Relief has been posting on Facebook, all over Facebook, uh, requesting people to donate to the uh, OMCOR uh, for them to uh, support those uh, victims of these uh, calamities. So let's conclude our prayers with a prayer now. Let us pray. Oh, holy God, we come to you once again, praying for those who are going through illness, those who are suffering with uh, illnesses and diseases, those who are suffering uh, with different kinds of needs. And we remember our brothers and sisters, particularly Brother Elicio and Sister Imelda de Guzman, who are suffering uh, with COVID right now. We pray that you heal them and touch them with your healing hands and bring renewal and healing upon them, O oh God, and restore them to good health. We all pray for all others who are suffering from this pandemic, that you please reach out to them through us in our simple ways, O oh God. We also pray now for uh, Lillian's co-worker, Elina, whose father passed away uh, the other night. We pray for your blessing upon her and her family, that, that during this time of grief and loss, that you bring comfort and consolation to them, and especially that peace that comes from you. We pray for those others who are also still grieving for the death of their loved ones. We pray for your presence upon upon them too, dear Lord. We also pray for those who are victims of calamities in Kentucky, uh, in other states here in this country, as well as those in the Philippines. Lord, once again, challenge us to share what we can to, uh, to somehow show our love and our support to these brothers and sisters, O oh God, and that through this, uh, you will make us your blessings uh, to these, your people. We pray now for uh, our church, our ministry together, continue to challenge us to be parts of your ministry uh, through our faith community. And bless every member of this church, O oh God, and continue to uh, reveal yourself to us in, in, in ways that uh, inspire us to serve you and to follow you and to uh, be your embodiment of your compassion and your love to each other and to the world. And so be with us now. Thank you once again. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever.
stand. Today's scripture reading is found in Luke chapter 1, verse 46 through 55. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoice in God my Savior. For he has looked for favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now all generations will call me blessed. For the, for the mighty one has done great things for me. And holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him for, from generation to generation. He, he has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hunger with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his ascenders, oh, his servants Israel in remembrance from his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestor, to Abraham and to he descendants forever. The word of the God for the people of God. Thank be to God. Jesus Christ the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. Good morning to everyone. Before I uh, go into the message, allow me to uh, congratulate this uh, beautiful congregation. Uh, coming here, I didn't uh, realize, me and my wife didn't realize how cold it is in uh, San Francisco. And I was telling her, baka walang uh, magsimba ngayon, lamig eh. But here you are, faithful ones. And we thank God for that. Uh, you are one of the few uh, Filipino congregations uh, standing, standing tall and keeping the faith. Uh, by now, you may have uh, learned that one of our uh, flagship uh, United Methodist Church in uh, Southern California has closed. And so this makes uh, Grace United Methodist Church San Francisco uh, the flagship that's still standing. Uh, also, maligayang kaarawan for uh, Ina, for Nanay, uh, you and your family, uh, continue to be uh, inspiration to this congregation. I'd also like to uh, mention the Filipino pastors, we are so uh, modest, we are so, so shy, so let me take this opportunity and also prayer for uh, the Reverend uh, Florentino Kaoli, who will, uh, by God's grace, soon to be a Reverend Doctor, Jun Kaoli. So we will pray for that. You know, it's always, uh, it's always good to have, although it's not necessary, to have uh, letters in our name, especially in our profession as uh, chaplains. So may maybe that will also encourage me to, to finish the, what I've started, uh, Pastor June. What I'd like to do is uh, continue to uh, what Alex read. Alex, uh, is that is that right? Alec, Alec. Alec, like Alec Baldwin. Uh, in addition, read uh, John one, starting from verse uh, eighteen. But what I'd like to do is uh, maybe. Uh, some of you have learned that. If not, it's a good technique also. Read it reversed, starting from 18, going to 1, if it, it, if it makes sense. This is uh, one of those uh, texts that are, that's read uh, during Advent. No one has ever seen God. The only one himself who is God who is the closest in fellowship with the Father, who is Jesus Christ, has made God known. For the law was given to Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. For we have all received from his fullness one gracious gift after another. This was the one whom God said, he who comes after me, John said, is greater than I am because he existed before me. Now the word became flesh and took residence among us. We saw his glory, the glory of the one and only, full of grace and truth, who came from the Father. And the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome it. In him was life, and the life was the light of mankind. All things were created by him, and apart from him, not one thing was created that has been created. The word was with God in the beginning. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was fully God. Eternal God, on this cold morning, as we worship, we ask that you would warm our hearts by your word, 
we are already warm by the songs we have heard, warm by the fellowship, seeing each other. Seeing each other makes us glad that we are still here, we are alive. Holy Spirit, warm us. Set our hearts on fire so that on this Advent, the Sunday before Christmas, that we will continue to reflect and prepare our hearts for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One of the things that uh, is challenging for a retired pastor like me who is only invited uh, maybe once in a blue moon is either the sermon is too long, my wife said, don't, don't do that, or it's too short. I have preached a sermon that's really too short, like five minutes. And uh, the treasurer told me, ang ikli naman pastor nung sermon mo. So maybe help me, pray with me, that it will be uh, in the middle, not too long, not too short. As I was reflecting on this uh, sermon for today, and th uh, by the way, thanks to Pastor Alex for inviting me and Pastor June for uh, leading the worship today. One of the things that I think is irrefutable that we, will, we can all agree upon is that we live in very strange, very challenging, uh, very interesting time. We never thought that a single virus in an unknown uh, province in China would deliver a massive blow to, the, to all humankind. And uh, incur debts that's uh, more than the world wars and uh, the wars combined. So it gives us a sense of uh, fear, a sense of uh, insecurity, uncertainty. Uh, I have uh, relatives and friends who have not been out for the whole duration of this, uh, of this uh, pandemic. Nakikinig lang sila sa radyo, nagpapabili lang ng grocery, uh, naguhugas ng kamay, all the masks, all the uh, sanitizer. And yet still, uh, we know that even with uh, three booster shots, with two and a booster shot, and maybe a fourth one, we are not uh, still uh, protected. We live in very uncertain times. Pastor June and I, who are chaplains, uh, know that we are at harm's way uh, every day, but we still do that because uh, we know we have been called to do that. So I was thinking, I was asking God, what is the message for God's people and also for me at the, on this uh, fourth Sunday of Advent? The text that uh, was read to us, first of all, was uh, by Alec. It's a beautiful uh, reading, which is called the Magnificat, which is the calling of Mary, and the assurance that God has called her in the midst of a very uncertain situation. Hindi pa naman siya nakikipag-talik sa kanyang magiging asawa ay nagbuntis na siya. What can be more uncertain than that? And yet God appears to, to her, to the angel, and says, uh, don't be afraid. Do not fear. And we know that that word, do not fear, uh, comes 365 uh, times in the Bible. 
which is one per day. Don't be afraid. If you are feeling afraid or uncertain, don't be afraid. And the text that I read to you from John 1 reiterates the beauty and the promise of uh, Advent. This is one text, John 1, 1 to 18, that's read that proves that uh, Jesus is not only uh, human, he's also God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word is W uh, capitalized which means it is uh, a person, a Jesus Christ. The Word was with God in the beginning, and all things were created by Him. Apart from Him, not one thing was created that has been created. What is the message for, that, for us in that uh, series of verses? It means that we are in the hands of God who was there from the beginning. And that Jesus, that we await on this uh, series of Advent uh, Sundays, the one who's coming is fully man, fully God. So if he's God, then he is while sometimes we feel he's not in control, he's still in control. So the sovereign God, it means God is in control. He knows what he's doing and he, everything will come into its completion. Maaring hindi natin nakikita ngayon, ngunit God is able to complete what he has started. And then he continues, Apostle John continues, all things were created by him, and apart from him, not one thing was created. So our body, our situation, our surroundings, God knows all about this. That should give us a sense of assurance that we are in good hands. In him was life, and the life was the light of mankind. So the one who came, is coming, and will come at the end of uh, history is one who is life itself. He has life, and he is able to give life to all of us because he created us. And the life was the light. One of the images of uh, Advent Christmas is the coming of light. And this light is not only like the lights we have, but it has life. The light has life. It has energy, it has power, it multiplies. And John Piper says, if you have Christ, and if you have the light, then you are also children of life. Later on, I will end with questions connected to this. Verse 5. And the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome it. Some uh, theologians say that this world... Uh, is a continuing battlefield of, uh, of light and darkness, of God and Satan, of uh, good and bad. I, I don't think I have to explain that because we, we experience that every day, isn't it? Every moment. Ang nagtutunggali ng kabutihan at kasamaan ang uh, katuwiran at ang uh, kasinungalingan. Even uh, philosophers, ethicists would say that 
when you continue uh, telling a lie like a million times, it becomes truth. Katotohanan na. Hindi mo na alam kung totoo hindi. Just as when we thought that the Delta COVID uh, strain is uh, under control, then another surprise, I believe from the forces of darkness, another variant from Africa, Omicron, who continues to to pose a threat to, to our security, our health. I don't know if uh, we have anything to do with that, but uh, I, you know, when I go home, I listen to NPR news and they said, oh, in California, the first uh, Omicron patient is from San Francisco. Narinig nyo ba yun? Yeah. I hope hindi taga dito yun, ano? Hindi taga sa atin. It's so scary. You don't know. Pakakaupsina mo yun, di ba? We live in so uncertain times. And even in the time of John, when he was prophesying, he said, Darkness comes and tries to overcome light. But the good news is that the darkness has not overcome the light, has not mastered the light. Kahit na anong gawin ng kasamaan, sabihin na natin ni, ni Satanas at ang kanyang mga kasamahan, lagi nagwawagi ang Panginoon. Amen? Just when we thought that there was no hope, uh, mind-boggling scientists, American scientists, finished uh, the uh, immunizations. Tapos sabay-sabay pa na, na, na immunize tayo. So if you're not yet immunized, magpa-immunize po kayo. Libre naman sa Walmart at CBS. Even in our day-to-day -day life, we see darkness trying to overcome the light, but light has never been mastered. Light has, before, now, and in the coming future, darkness will not overcome light. Now, this is important because in the Bible, we are the children of light. So it means, logically, that in our day-to-day -day life, as we are close to the light, we also shine forth the light in our workplace, sa ating mga kausap. Have you, have you experienced some uh, conversation with a stranger and the stranger would say, you know, I have met so many people, but something's different. You're, you're different. Opening Leon, that's a good opening for sharing what you know. It's not just your hair or your you know beauty, but something's different. Something is radiant. That's the life of Christ. In him was life, and the life was the light of mankind. Light shines in the darkness, but darkness has not mastered it. God has given us the energy, the power that we're able to share life and light to the world. Several more points. The true light has come through Jesus Christ, the first advent, and he will come again in the second advent. The true light who gives light to everyone. Now this is something, the next verse in verse 10, something of a description which is really true even today. He was in the world and the world was created by him through him, but the world did not recognize him. Why? 
because he came to the world, but the world loved darkness more than the light. Do you see that in your uh, dealings with uh, people who don't know the Lord? Tumating ang Panginoon, God is showing Himself to them, but they love darkness more than the light. Billy Graham, the greatest evangelist, perhaps, of our generation and uh, all generations, said, I'm still puzzled by the fact that the gospel, which is Christ died for you, you have to accept Christ, and you will be given eternal life. The most beautiful message, the simplest message, and yet people still turn down the, the offer. Why will you turn down a beautiful offer? Minsan nga tayo sa mole, buy one, get one free. Hindi natin ma-turn down yun, di ba? But here, the greatest gift, people turn that offer down. The light came into the world, but the light, the world did not recognize him because they love darkness more than the light. But this is the promise. The next verse is God's promise to us. But to all who received him, who believe in him, he has given the right to become children of God. This is the greatest gift that God could give us, that we become his children, born not of human parents or human desire, but by God. Now the word became flesh and took upon residence among us. We saw his glory, the glory of the one God, full of grace and truth, who came from the Father. So the Son radiated the light that came from the Father. You see, na yung sinabi niya, yung walong anak niya, tama po ba? Walo eh talagang blessing sa kanya at uh, naituro niya yung uh, mga aral ng pagkakristyano. So when they see the children, they will say, oh, that's nanay and tatay's children. And when they see the parents, they will look at the children and say, yeah, truly they are in us uh, in uh, children. So God himself through Jesus radiates the light coming from God. For we have received, John says, from the fullness, the one gracious gift from another. We have seen his glory full of grace and truth. The one that we're awaiting for is one who gives light and life one who is full of glory and truth. Kaya tayo mga Kristiyano, yun din ang dapat na ma maipakita natin sa ating mga kaibigan, sa ating mga kaopisina, sa ating mga kachat, sa ating mga ka-Facebook, sa ating mga ka-chika-chika. The one and only God Himself who is closest in relationship with the Father God has made known through Jesus Christ. So now we have journeyed, preparing ourselves, prepared the way of the Lord. We have reminded ourselves of the peace and joy that comes from Christ. Now we are reminded of life, love, and light coming from the Lord Jesus Christ. So as I end this time with us, allow me to ask questions, and these are questions that I, I also ask myself as a Christian, as a pastor, as a chaplain, and Pastor June can uh, attest to this. In our action, 
Did we do something that is life-affirming? Yung bang ginawa natin ay nakakapagbigay buhay o nagdadagdag tayo sa misery. We are adding to the misery and uh, the suffering of the, of the other. How about hope? My wife shared to me uh, a reading that said, if there is one thing that we need at this time, in this very special, uncertain time, it is hope. Clinging to hope, believing that this is not the end. Although this uh, pandemic has uh, become really close to many of us. Noon pag malayo, di ba, narinig natin, ay, naman si ganun eh, na, namatay na, nawala dahil sa COVID, ganun. O dun sa ibang bansa. But when, like my, my uh, wife, when it's your three cousins, first cousins, then malapit na yon, Hindi na biro yon. When I hear the news that my first cousin, uh, Brido Simon, fair, a former mayor of uh, Quezon City, uh, not died, he's still alive, but was very sick of COVID. Malapit na yon, Hindi na malayo yon. When you hear of your co-worker or your patient, patients in the hospice that we visit that are dying of COVID, and yet we still have to visit, sobrang prayer yon. With all the PPEs, sana hindi ako ma... Hawaan. These are very interesting, uncertain times. We need to have the hope that Advent brings. And finally, I asked the question, which was a question posted during our sixth grade uh, commencement exercise. There was a song in the early 70s. Kung buhay kayo nun, bata kayo, you, you will know this song. The, the question is, did I fill the world with love? Something about, in the morning of my life, I shall look to the sunrise. And then the song ends, did I fill the world with love? Kinakanta na ni Ate Nora. Did I fill the world with love? So as we end our... This is fourth Sunday. This is a Sunday before Christmas. Okay? I know that after this, takbuhan na tayo sa mga, ano, bibili na ng mga hamon, keso di bola, mga ganun. Si Christmas na eh. But let's ask before we uh, go to that business. Am I feeling the world with love? Sa lahat bang ginagawa ko may pag-ibig? Ito ba'y nagbibigay buhay? O... Oh, sumisira ng buhay. Ito ba'y nagbibigay ng pag-asa, lalo na sa panahong ito, na napakaraming tao na wala ng pag-asa para sa kanilang buhay. The Christian Church, the message of Advent, is a missional message. Dalin natin ang ilaw na nasa atin, at ipahayag natin sa sanlibutan. May God continue to be with us as we prepare for our uh, individual celebrations. Again, I congratulate this church. I uh, pray for you as one of the last standing Filipino United Methodist Churches. Mabuhay kayo and continue to keep the faith and continue to share the light and love and hope to the world. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us glorify God with the gifts we now give that others may know the glorious hope of Christ Jesus.
God, we thank you for how you have been with us in this time of worship. Our hearts are full of thanksgiving for the birthday of Ina, for how you have blessed this family, for how they continue to be uh, the inspiration for this uh, community of faith. We ask for many more years to come for health and wellness. Some of us, Lord, have come because this is a blue Christmas. We have lost loved ones. We are sad because of uh, the things happening in the world. But you rem remind us, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. That death is not the end, but also a beginning. Some of us have come, Lord, but we cannot share the the prayers openly, you know, our hearts. And so we just open our hearts to you, O Lord, and we ask your spirit, the spirit that searches the inmost parts of our being to know what we desire, what we need, Lord. And we open our hearts to you. Continue to be with us as we prepare ourselves, our families, our communities for the coming of Christmas. Thank you for the youth that have uh, prepared and will serve uh, food to the hungry, for the hungry and uh, for the night ministry of uh, San Francisco. Lord, you have placed this church in such a challenging situation at the heart of San Francisco. With all its beauty and challenges, may we radiate hope, love, and light to the world. Panginoon, tulungan mo kami, patnubayan mo kami, gabayan mo kami. Palakasin mo kami kung kami nangihina. Bigyan mo kami ng aming mga kailangan araw-araw. Ilayo mo kami sa anumang sakuna at mga pagtukso abang inaalala namin ang mga kababayan namin at mga uh, mga kasama dito sa Amerika na biktima ng mga bagyo at mga kung ano-ano pang mga pangyari sa buhay, Lord. We just lift them up. All this we ask in Jesus' name. 
Amen. And now let's receive the blessing. I'm reading a part of the blessing from the Church of Canada. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus who is crucified, risen, our judge, and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are never alone. Thanks be to God. Amen.